Hi there, folks. Yeah. In YouTube land. Yeah. I have some images of uh, the art world in the Lower East Side um, during the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. And this was quite an interesting time because this was the last real, before things got expensive, before people were really all about branding themselves, uh, when it was art for art's sake rather than money for God's sake. And so here's an interesting, Sandro Danini, right? He's from Italy, and he's one of the first, uh, you know, founding fathers of Money for God's Sake. Okay. And he started a thing called Plexus on 6th Street. Yeah. And he had a, we had these things called, uh, I used to build nightclubs, and I helped uh, wire uh, Xenons and Plexus and... Um, wetlands and um, kamikazes and the tunnel club and uh, the palladium and the mud club and um, CBGBs. These are all places that hmm. I was like the master electrician hmm. at. And I had carte blanche to do anything I pretty much wanted to do there. I could do art shows there, performance art, you name it. Hmm. And there were a ton of abandoned buildings and we took them over. Hmm. And we had... Um, so here's a school that we took over, PS122, that's now a very famous art school. And we took one o over in, um, in, um, in Queens that is now PS1, which is very famous. Mm -hmm. And entities like, um, oh, and this, you know, the entities are things like the kitchen and the, and the Franklin Furnace mm -hmm. and the Knitting Factory. These were all entities that uh, were from the 60s and 70s, but became institutions in the 80s. And we were all cousins. I was part of a thing called Collaborative Artist Projects. And um, we were one of the first people, um, there was plenty, the NEA was started in the uh, late 40s, early 50s by um, a Southern center uh, with hair plugs. Um, and he wanted to show the commies that we did art too. So, but most of that money went to the, to the opera and the ballet and things like that, but not to individual artists. And Collaborative Artist Projects was the first huh. to do that. And all of these events we did out of, of that. And we would take yeah. over abandoned buildings like this. When I came back from Ireland, um, Ronald Reagan had, just like what now is occurring, um, yeah. is a real strong connection between uh, uh, Ronald Reagan and um, uh, Donnie Chump. And um, so wow. with the oil embargo, these were all uh, Section 8 housing uh, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, rent control departments. And the city paid for everything. They were privately owned. But when the oil embargo hit and oil went from like 15 cents a barrel to... Uh, 60 bucks a barrel, they couldn't heat these places anymore. Uh -huh. And so the landlords just walked away and the city couldn't afford it, so they just um, you know, closed them up. So between seven, 69 and 80, almost a million apartments were lost, just abandoned, walked okay. away from. And banks redlined neighborhoods that meant that they wouldn't lend money to businesses, so the businesses couldn't stay going. So that meant now the neighborhoods didn't have their grocery store or their shoemaker or whatever. And that was Bed-Stuy, Waynesburg, Brooklyn, Lower East Side, up uh, above Harlem, South Bronx, and a million and a half of these apartments went final. So we went and took them over because there was nobody there. And we put nightclubs in them, and we put homeless people in them, and uh, we took over 500 apartments in four years and brought them up to code. <laughs> and I was a master electrician, so I put electricity in there. Now this is ABC No Rio. This is an art uh, thing on Rivington Street. And again, this is where we had art shows like every month, you know? Who's and, that guy? Oh, I have no idea. Oh. But, you know, this is 1982. <laughs> and I wasn't the only person running this. And so uh, 
This was a, a, a true garret on 6th Street, a, a, a place that was plopped on top of a building, and it was, it was quite a beautiful artist gallery. Oh. That, that was Anna Jemson. Anna Jemson was a gorgeous woman who made herself Ooh. look ugly. Yeah. She cut all her beautiful hair off, and she, she would, you know, try to be, because she was so, you know, just tired of guys hitting on her. Oh, I've seen that some women do that. So here's a, and she was really gorgeous. Here's the New York City um, band show. And we did a thing called Universal Peace Day. And this was right across the street from um, the um, Strawberry Fields. And uh, this was uh, backed up by uh, uh, the Lennon uh, family. Yoko Ono, and we, whenever we did this, and we did this on the, okay. the day they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, huh. and um, we, would, we were some of the first people to go internet, oh. you know, we, internet existed, okay. but it wasn't like uh, www like it is today, yeah. so we had our people all over the world doing this, and here's Lynn. And she started a, a yeah. amazing restaurant called the Miracle Grill, and uh, we were. Uh, let's see, and this is uh, Yuri are, are Capella. Are any of them named Larry? No, none of them named. Well, there's one guy named Lawrence. Oh, see, okay. so here there's a place on the west side uh, called Westbeth, and it had been an old yeah. telephone um, in, you know, installation. Okay. And when the artist started uh, taking over Soho. We had a good 10 years of having fun there. But then the lawyers moved in and the yuppies moved in. But when we took over um, Soho, we told Mayor Lindsay, you just let us do our thing. We will make this gold. And in 10 years, we did. So they gave us this building, West yeah. Bath, and a good million dollars to fix it up. And Michael um, yeah. Curtin, and not Curtin, Michael Keane and I, uh, but mostly him, uh, this was the basement. And the only paint we found for free was blood red. So oh. this was a 7,000 square foot basement that we spray painted blood red. Wow, yeah. And it was a, um, oh, a place where artists came, uh, a salon, right? But it was so red that a lot of people freaked out there. And here's- I thought it was like a Satan thing or something. Yeah, but it wasn't. And here's yeah, Christine Barton. Uh, whenever you go see a Pixar movie and their logo was uh, the little lamp, that was her PhD thesis. She was one of the founders. She also, uh, I mean, she, you, you go, go Google Christine Barton. She's got like 15 PhDs. She is instrumental in about 10 uh, planetary changing technologies. Wow. And she was part of our crew. And there she is again. Here we are at a club. What's her name? Christine Barton. And she's very... And there she, that's you. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, we were a thing. Oh, about cool. three years. And there she is there. We were on the beach. Wow. And if, if I have anything that I can hold myself proud of was that this girl was the hardest working person on the planet. Wow. And um, she never took a day off. And I always made her, you know, have a good time. Oh. And that's why I was her boyfriend. Okay. And I understood what she was talking about. Most people had no idea what the heck she was talking about. Uh, so here we are. There's my dog Jack on the beach. Your dog. My dog Jack. I've always had a dog. It's only mm. only recently I haven't. Oh, uh, these are pages of, of girlfriends. So this was a girl, huh. a very sweet girl. I should have married this girl. Mm. But you didn't. You got hit. It, it came out better anyway. Right? No, no, it, it, not for her anyway. But, but, but uh, for the woman that you ended up marrying. Instead, yeah, well, that was uh, the one to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. But she was great too. Um, she was. Oh, but she. She was brilliant and smart and gorgeous, wow. yeah. and loads of fun. And she put up with a guy like me. She was a Ford like, model. Um, one of the Almond Brothers. Yeah, one of the Almond <laughs> Brothers. And here I, in one of the abandoned buildings, a buddy of mine from Arkansas came with a ton, I mean tons and tons and tons of quartz crystal. Okay. And this was before quartz was in. Yeah. So this 
This is the Storm Nuclear Power Plant, which we Whoa. stopped. And we would have music from Friday through Monday. We would have people singing and dancing and doing art in front of the nuclear power plant. And um, why we were so successful is that we got the cops to be at our back. Oh, cool. Meaning they weren't, mm -hmm. they weren't against yeah. us because we showed them. So here's a great mm -hmm. picture. We did a big, we did about 10 large demonstrations oh. where, where we got about 50,000 people. Wow. Right? So this was the first one and I brought a piece of chain link fence to the Nassau County uh, okay. Police Department and I showed the police how to arrest people without hurting them or anybody getting upset or anything getting going like going sharp uh, what's, what's the place where things went wrong um, in uh, Virginia just this summer Charlottesville, Charlottesville. so this could that have been way this, this, Charlotte, this, Charlottesville isn't that isn't that way at all it's, it's actually a kind of northern I know place. I know but the, the, but I mean the way that it went and, violent yeah this this on the other hand was quite conservative and we had we had 60,000 people on the site of a postage stamp I mean, way more than they had, and we didn't have one uh, fatality or injury or uh, even arrest. But was it Southern people, the no, this KKK was all, that this, went to Charlottesville? No, no, it was troublemakers. Oh, okay. It this, was just it, it didn't it didn't matter if they were north, south, or what. Right, they were, they were just racist, they were just racist. troublemakers. Yeah. And then racist people, and then they had right. the uh, and these guys. So these people were more, you know, Long Island at this time um, had more. Mm, agro people mm. than um, than Charlottesville sure does. Great. Anyway, so there's uh, Michio Kaku mm -hmm. when he was a young man. Now he's an old mm. guy. And there's Catherine, my cousin from Ireland. Mm. And uh, there's uh, Miss Benatar. She sang. Pat Benatar. Yeah, there she is. That's really Pat Benatar. Yeah, there she is. Whoa. Yep. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. yep. Really? Yeah. Hey, that's amazing. That's Pat Benatar. And here's a crowd. And I mean, we just kept people there all the time. Who are those people? Um, uh, demonstrators. Oh, okay. These are people, organizers. These are wow. all the people I worked with to uh, uh, stop the Shorm campaign. Here's our congressman. Here's the radio show I had for about three years uh, at uh, CW Post uh, College. Here I am being Mr. Radio guy, yeah. and this girl, she was a, a um, Marinol nun, Ooh. right? And the Marinols were the first people to lose the collar, lose the penguin suit, right? And I don't know if you guys remember, but back during the Jimmy Carter days when El Salvador, Nicaragua, all of that was going on, yeah. um, there were a group of um, nuns murdered. Ooh. And it was her crew that got murdered. Mm. And she was a doctor, and she was off delivering a baby, so she didn't get murdered. Whoa. Yeah, That's yeah. terrible. So this woman had more guts than anyone I ever knew. Mm. And she was so much fun. Now this lady, this girl, she was a total Catholic, and her husband was uh, the second in charge of Long Island Lighting okay. Company. And she refused to give him a divorce or have sex with him until he closed the nuclear power plant. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's the level of commitment to the folks that were involved in the stopping of the Shorn power plant. And so every weekend we had at least this many people singing and listening and, and going off and taking the, the story to their neighbors because it was, the power plant was uh, gonna kill everyone. It was like the worst built power plant there, but we always had a crowd. Wow. Yep. That's 25A. Northern Boulevard, right in, in Shoreham, Long Island. And here we are getting arrested, but very nicely, because we taught the police how to do it. See, the lady's got a smile on her face. Yeah. She's, she's not upset. Oh, yeah. Right? This guy, too. He's like, you know, everyone's got a smile on the face. If, you know, even if you could see the policeman's face, they'd have smiles on their face, too. And so, um, and this is back to New York, and so we were, right, the same thing that was going on today. Um, there were t uh, thousands of people in New York City mm. because they didn't want to go back to the war zone of Nicaragua mm. and El Salvador. Mm. And um, 
And so here's so this was a weekend crowd. Wow. On the beach behind the plant. Wow. We did that. We did that every weekend. We were there 24/7 for yeah. four years, and that's how you stop something. Not just like, oh, we want to stop it. Um, here's the NRC hearings, which they were not going to even have, but we forced them to have it. The NRC hearings. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Oh. And at the same time, I was working uh, in a carnival. Wow. I was doing my little... Um, what were you doing? Well, I was being an electrician, but I was uh, mostly being an anthropologist because that crew of, um, uh, of the carnival were gypsies. Yeah, no, no. And yeah. that's where I learned how to read palms yeah. from those okay. guys. So here's my art. This is what my art was. Oh, you looked. learned it from the carnival. Yeah, yeah. And you can, you're good at reading palms. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And this is... Uh, Have you ever... Can you read a cat's palm? No. You can't? No. You think maybe there's some way that that would be possible? Well, yeah, maybe, but uh, I couldn't do it. So he, this is uh, uh, Tim Hutchins, who is one of the um, most brilliant men on gravimagnetic propulsion. Okay. And these little equations back here is about free energy. Wow. This was at the United Nations. I was part of the, um, a uh, NGO at the UN where we, wow. where we tried to push alternative technologies. And, um, you know, uh, we, we had great success, but no one listened. Oh. And so here's a nice house I built. I built about eight of these. these I took the wood from um, Civil War houses, took the, the, the barns completely apart, oh put in a new foundation and build a brand new house looking just like the barn. And we took, and I had a great crew. These were all guys who were drunks and heroin addicts, and we could frame a house in two days. Wow. A, a like 4,000 square foot house in four days. And they did all the cabinet work themselves Oh, it's amazing. We milled all the wood from the old wood. See the beams? These were the beams from the old barn. So this is a brand spanking new house with brand spanking new everything. Um, but we used um, the trim and the, and made it look like it was being supported yeah. by by the beams. It's is a rainbow really? gathering. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. One of the, is it one of the first rainbow gatherings? Oh, the early, the early one. No, no, this was in the 70s. So. Okay. Huh. Not the first, but you know, one of the earlier. One of the ones that this girl was kind of interesting. She was a uh, geneticist huh. at uh, Eli Lilly. She was also a girlfriend. Cool. And that was me with her sister's baby. Okay. And her sister was like. Uh... Anyway, so these are all pictures of times that were, you know, 40 years ago. Yeah. And yet, the times before them were, so here's our gallery, hmm. you know, so we, we did all these amazing things, these the great art, you know, and, and loads of fun. We did, we had our own TV show called Potato Wolf. If Potato you were, Wolf. Potato Wolf. If you yeah, know, I was going to mention that. If you were going to go yeah. look up on YouTube or go look up on Google Collaborative Artist Projects, and Potato Wolf. You would see this. It was the big local television show in it was New, New York City. It was, it was Manhattan Cable. And Manhattan was the first place to have, or one of the first places to have cable. Because even though the antenna was on top of the World Trade uh, Empire State Building, there were so many buildings, it was like ghost TV. Yeah. So by the, yeah. by the 50s, they had cable. Oh, yeah. Because people wanted to see real TV. So, But by 1960s, their cable was good enough where they had like 50, 60 channels, but only four or five of them were being used. So they had all of that other stuff as community access. So with our little nonprofit entity, we started uh, Potato Wolf. And we started, there were about nine of us. Were you still doing it in the late 80s, early 90s? Oh yeah, oh yeah, in late 90s. 80s. Well, we stopped. Because uh, uh, when I was a little kid, I saw it on TV. And they, well, you know but what But there happened? was a different one. We sold. They put a point. 
they it may have been the nineties, early nineties. We they sold our rights. We we got money. They put a porn on the local TV and broadcasted across New York I don't, City. I don't, yeah, well they have that. No, they had their. It was on New Year's Eve. Yeah, they had I their own. It. I mean, they were doing that already. What we were doing that. I mean, we we didn't call it porn. We called it free speech. But cable TV. I mean, even Manhattan. You know, um, what's what's uh, what's uh, blah, blah, blah. what's the um, ca- the first cable network that's still around that you pay for? ABC, NBC, CBS. No, 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 no. That you pay for that they put shows on. That HBO. They, HBO. They had porn. Okay. You know, so porn. Well, was you no, mean not real porn, but like soft corn. No, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. You know, no. real porn. Uh oh, smoking a giant cigarette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. something strange. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. no, not you know, doing it. The real porn. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, porn is just porn has been around since the Greeks. Huh. You know, it's 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 like huh. <laughs> you yeah, know, it great. is what it is. Okay. It's it's human yeah, yeah. nature. There's nothing wrong or sick or dirty about yeah, yeah. sex. You know, yeah. there is nothing wrong or dirty. About the human body. I mean, most of art is is, a, is 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 on it. Yeah, know? it's how we procreate. Yeah, it's no big deal. And that is, you know, back in the day, when we talk about Adam and Eve, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and uh, Eve being tempted by the snake and uh, the eating the fruit of knowledge. Well, the not, you know, wasn't the the knowledge of good and evil. What it was was the knowledge of reproduction, sex. Yeah. That's what they learned about, you know, and right. that's and that's what started the ball rolling, yeah. you know. And you know, first Adam and Eve have, uh, you know, children, and they had no other children, so those children had sex you know, with their brothers and sisters, you know. Oh, strange. If if that's true, according to, are you sure? I would say that most text, most holy books, most any of the above, or, have have a a um, foundation in truth, but how it's spun is a whole nother story. Because but did they have did they ha- have sex with the, each other as the children, or did they, did they no no mix with I, other who, I wasn't there. I have no idea. With... But it just by the sheer first, it starts out with Adam and Eve. They have kids. Well, there's no, it wasn't like Lizzie and, and, and Cynthia over there uh, and Mike and uh, Susan. Over, no, there was just Adam and Eve. So, uh, and what but it, it, was there a further story in the Bible oh, yes. about how oh, their children oh, yes. made oh, yes. other children? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's, it's called the Nephilim, meaning really what it looks like. If you even just look at the, the Bible, Nephilim? Yes. So they didn't have sex with each other as incest? Uh, who knows? I wasn't there. But is there a story to say that they didn't have incest in the Bible? Or no, is it no, no, no. It just keeps saying, and then Bob begat Sue, and Sue begat, you know. But the real story is that they don't like to talk about is that human beings, Homo sapiens sapiens, are a genetic experiment. Oh. We were created genetically, and we're getting, you know, CRISPR is getting pretty close to doing that. Um, we are uh, and were. Um, manufactured to be a slave and that's why we have it's so easy for human beings to slave other human beings and for human beings to let themselves be slaves because we were genetically engineered to be slaves you know How, and why do you what makes you say that because I don't if you look at uh, all of the species on earth right I don't know well, if they I agree. all I don't kind of I get agree. along. They all fit into the pattern of mm-hmm. nature. The one, one species that does not fit in is the human race. You know, you do not. Yeah, you see lions killing animals, but just to eat, not to like take their car. You know, not to take their stuff. Well, they might. No, I don't think in so. In nature, they might kill another animal if it was taking their berries or something. No, 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 because there are enough berries. See, on this planet. And even today, there is enough for everyone. You know, we do not live on a planet of scarcity. We live in a planet of abundance. It is only political and economic dynamics uh, that foster uh, this inequality. And um, all of, if you truly are a scholar, not not, uh, a scholastic, 
not a um, you know mm. person married to a text, mm. but people who read everything and talk to everyone and see what not his story mm. because that's what his story. Some you know Thucydides, the father of written history, mm. was once asked, "So what's history?" And he replied, "Whatever Rome." pays me to write. History, humans have been around millions of years. We are lied to. We are, we are kept in the dark. And every time we get close to lifting up that veil, we are snapped down. It's like whack-a-mole. You know, and movies are our best little window into it because The Wizard of Oz was a great little thing, you know. The golden, off to see the wizard, where did he live? In a Emerald City, Greenbacks, right? Uh, you know, he was living in the uh, um, Federal Reserve. And, um, and the Federal Reserve has as much to do with the federal government and your economy as Federal Express has to do with the federal government. The Federal Reserve is not run by the government. It is a privately owned stock held corporation mm. that prints our money. Only reason our mm. stock market is through the roof is because of quantitative easing. For the last 10 years, they've been just giving money to banks. So anyway, that's the story. Art is the only that, truth. I understand that's your opinion, but I, I wouldn't necessarily agree I with think that. I said... I am a scholar. I am not a scholastic. I am not saying that you should believe anything I say. I say go check it out, kids. You know? And make art. Make art, not war. You know? Make art, not uh, go work for Google. Make art. If you go to Google, make art. But the bottom line is the expressive characteristic in the first person. That's truly the But closest. Google is good, right? Google is a corporation that there is been there from the outset to manufacture and collect as much money, power, and control as they can. I mean, everyone's got one of those little magic boxes and stares in it 24-7, you know? So you think Google was created by some company, but it started as just another search engine. Sure. And it was it was the same as Yahoo. These other ones, it was little in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden it just got huge. Same with Microsoft. That was, But <clears throat> you have to look at the people who started it, what they said they were doing, and what they're doing now. Yeah, but they own YouTube. And they they're, paying me, they're paying me money for the videos. Well, you know, that's good. But it's also a, a hook to control everything because now they own everything. Why would they... Why do they control? Why does the Catholic Church control? The Catholic Church came from the Council of Nicaea, and before those guys became bishops and cardinals and popes, mm. they were Roman um, okay. pagans, mm, yeah. and their business was going down the drain. So they flipped it and said, "Oh, instead of throwing all these Christians to uh, to uh, the lions, why don't we call ourselves Christians? And not only will we own all of their property, their money, their food, control them with our armies who have big spears, we will own their souls. Anyway, with that little idea, remember, no war, that, that, that's make, like a scary... make art, not war. No, it's not scary. It's I think what it's a it conspiracy is. theory. No, it's not a conspiracy theory. Well, I mean, what do you think happens when you die? Who knows? Um, one you, thing you I don't do think know, they control you, do you? Who knows? And I mean, uh, look, some, look at the movie. Go to the uh, hell under the real earth. Look at the movie. Uh, <laughs> I've 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 died myself six times, meaning uh, you know near death experience. So you would know that that it's not true. When you die, you you leave your body, and there's another side. Right. I left my body. You know, and I was and I was basically so, on the roof watching people try. How to are they controlling them. you? You do whatever you want. Well, you know that's it seems that so way. So it's just some crazy conspiracy theory no, that no, people no, wor no. worry about. John, but to, you don't have to. The thing is, they're not controlling. You're not a slave. You do whatever you want. Well, uh, to a certain point, it's it's that's why that movie, The Matrix, was such a brilliant film because it really did give a good explanation of what's going on, and um, you know we're just somebody's software running. You know, 
So, um, I have no idea. But we're idea. not brainwashed. I have no idea. I, I sure know a lot of people who are. But who? anybody who watches... Like they're pushing in a certain agenda. They don't even believe in it, right? Really. Well, they don't even understand it. They don't know it. Most people who, who would kill you for their religion really have never read the Bible. You know, today, Billy Graham died, right? And Billy Graham was actually a friend of mine. I lived in Asheville, North Carolina. And when I worked, I used to fly out of Asheville Who's Airport. Billy Graham? Billy Graham was um, one of the world's most well-known Christian evangelist, you know, who, okay. who talked about Jesus. And he uh, had the ear of pres. He was like the president's uh, pastor in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s, too, up to, up to Jimmy Carter. And, and eh, more, too. But by the end of the 90s, he started to get dead. But he used to go all over the place, and he was, I used to always, there was one airplane that left on Thursdays from Asheville and would go to Charlotte, and then you would go to wherever you were gonna go. And I would meet, I would bump into that, because that was the only airplane. And if I was gonna go work like Monday on, yeah. I would get on there, go to where I was gonna go, get it together, start working Monday. I'd get there Thursday, get my place, blah, blah, blah. Yep. So I got on that airplane with Billy Graham, I don't know how many times, maybe 20, you know? And he always wore very nicely clean pressed, um, um, you know, jeans, a nice denim shirt and cowboy um, um, boots. And um, he would get on and he'd have his little... Um, cowboy boots? Yeah, cowboy boots. He, he wore cowboy boots. And I just he, saw something about cowboy boots. And so uh, he would uh, have his little uh, briefcase and he'd have all the stuff wherever he was going. And we always sit together. And um, so for 20 airplane rides, I got to know Billy Graham really pretty good. And I'm a guy who does my homework. So by the third time I realized, hey, every Thursday, if I'm, gonna, I'm a 50-50 or even more chance I'm going to sit with Billy Graham, so I asked him about a lot of stuff, you know, how he'd become a preacher, what, where did he grow up, what kind of, you know, was his daddy, a, you know, all of those kind of things. And then also... He told you the truth? Oh, yeah. That, that was the amazing thing. It was like, you know, because nobody was really, he didn't, he didn't get on with an odd tarot. It's like, oh, I'm Billy Graham. He just got on the airplane by himself, you know, hmm. and went to wherever he was going. And, and How we much would money say, do you have? Millions? Yeah, million? yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He didn't have like a billion or something. Uh, who knows? I never asked him to look at his piggy bank. Then he'd be on a private jet. But he that's the kind of guy he was. Even okay. if he owned a private jet, he would have been flying on that airplane. But he wasn't as famous as... He was the most famous preacher there was at the time. Really? Yep. He was more famous than... Uh, than uh, was he like, nice? Uh, yes. Like I said, he was an average nice guy. He wasn't. He was humble. He wasn't full of himself. But he was, you know, um, so anyway, he had, like, he didn't march with Martin Luther King. He didn't, you know, he wasn't ecumenical, right? Because in the What's time, ecumenical mean? Where that means, like, right now, like, the Pope is, like, he loves everybody, Jews mm. and Gentiles and, you know, you, you know, gay people, you name it, the, our present Pope. Oh, loves. but that's the present Pope. Right. But this is, he has a new view on things. But in the in the fifties, sixties, and seventies, that's you know Billy Graham wasn't the guy. He wasn't ecumenical, but he was a nice, humble, real guy, and he was honest as the day is long. And I asked him some pretty hard questions. So you're done with, with, with the interview? Yeah, yeah. So you want to say, Schlan Kapal Kape Shampal, which is Gaelic for "Hey, have a good time with the beer." Hmm. If you're an adult over 21. No, no, no. <laughs> so you want to say bye to everybody? Bye. Love Check you. Out. Check out more of his videos. Yep, yep. Okay, bye. Al Bob, out.